today we continue with our class uh, Hilchas Talmud Torah. We start with uh, Sefer Chofetz Chaim, and the topic is uh, big topic is uh, constructive listening. Same topic, and uh, uh, today's topic soliciting information. Not only one may listen to the Hilus, that is important to him to hear. He may even approach someone uh, and, requ uh, and request information uh, that would otherwise be considered rehilus. Obviously, so rehilus meaning that somebody, what somebody said about me, right? Or let's say, right? Uh, but on, it's only for constructive purpose, of course. Obviously, or somebody said about uh, my friend or my, my relatives, my rabbi. Obviously, the solicitor must take it, make it clear that, uh, that his uh, so solicitation is uh, sanctified by halacha. So, meaning that you have to explain to that person why it is for a constructive purpose. One must also be careful to request only pertinent information and nothing more. Okay. Uh, should the person uh, from whom the information was requested be in a related unnecessary gossip, he should be stopped immediately. So, if I need uh, to know about only that in the specific individual for uh, whatever, what what he was saying about me, so that's uh, that's fine. But I cannot ask uh, what else was going on there. That was okay. That's uh, the idea. Stop here. So in Hilchas Talmud Torah, uh, we left off on chapter number five. Um, sure. Chapter number five, Halacha number one. And it's, so we're going to read with our commentaries and then go back. It's very long. So it says, um, Just as a person is commanded to honor his father and hold him uh, in awe, so too he is obligated to honor his teacher and hold him in awe. Indeed, the measure of honor and awe due to one's teacher exceeds due to the, uh, the one's father. His father brings him to, to the life of this world, while his teacher who teaches his wisdom bring him into the life in the world to come. Accordingly, if he saw a lost object belonging to his father and one belonged to his teacher, the lost object belongs to his teach teacher takes precedence. If his father and his teacher are both carrying loads, he should re uh, relieve his teacher load and then his father's. If this father and his teacher are held as captives, he should redeem his teacher and afterwards redeem his father. However, if his father is a Torah scholar, is also a Torah scholar, he should redeem father first. Similarly, if his father is a Torah scholar, even if he is not equivalent to his teacher, he should return his lost article. And then that belongs to his teacher. There is no greater honor than due to, to, the, to a teacher, and no greater awe than that due a teacher. Our sage is declared, your fear of your teacher should be equi equivalent to the fear of heaven. No more, no less. Uh, therefore, they said, whoever disputes the authority of his teacher is uh, considered as he revolts against divine presence. As implied by uh, Numbers uh, uh, 26 9, who led a revolt against God. Whoever engages in controversy with his teacher uh, is considered as if he engaged in controversy with divine presence, as implied by Numbers 20 13, uh, where the Jews um, contested with God um, and, where he, and, and where he was sanctified. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and, and where he was sanctified. So we're going to explain what is it. Where, where is it? Uh, whoever complains against his teacher is considered as if he complains against divine presence. As it, uh, implied by Exodus 16.8, uh, uh, your complaints are not against us, but against God. Whoever thinks that despairingly uh, of his teacher, thinks, right? Uh, is considered as is he thought despairingly about divine presence, as implied uh, by Numbers 25, 21 5. And uh, the people spoke against God and Moshe. Just one second. One second. One second. Okay. Okay, let's start. Um, 
so let's start from the beginning and we're going to explain and of course there are a lot of commentaries what to learn from this halacha. So it says, uh, just as a person commanded to honor his father and hold him in awe, commentary, in Exodus uh, 20, 12 commands, honor your father and mother. Uh, Vaitran 19, 3 commands, a man shall fear his mother and father. See Hilchas Mamrim chapter 6 for discussion of these mitzvahs. Okay, fear. So awe and fear are very close. I think awe is more than fear. Okay, so too, so one more time. Just as a person commanded to honor his father and hold him in awe, so it's actually a commandment, right? So too, he's obligated to honor his teacher and hold him in awe. Commentary. All the particulars of this halacha apply only regarding Veraf um, Muhak, the teacher who, uh, from whom one has learned majority of the wisdom. As it says in Baba Basra, Baba Baba Mitzia, 33a. See also the commentary in the next halacha. Okay. However, every teacher under whom uh, one uh, studied Torah deserves a certain measure of respect. Hal halacha 9. Okay. So now we're talking about um, a teacher. Uh, 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 um, from whom a person learned majority of, of, of his story. So it's not uh, it's not so simple. I mean, many many people learn from from a teacher and then from books and uh, from another source. So I mean, um, so in many cases it's not going to apply in many cases, but uh, but still we we see the the magnitude, right? How how we have to. Um, respect a, a teacher, a rabbi, who, uh, from whom we, uh, we get the majority of our Torah. Indeed, the measure of honor and awe due to one's teacher exceeds that of his father. So meaning that a person has to um, respect his teacher more than his father. Very interesting. Uh, his father brings him into this life of this world. Right? Meaning what? There is a, he sired him provided him uh, with his fundamental necessities, so we cannot take away it from, from our father, right? While his teacher, who teaches him he, uh, him wisdom, brings him into life in the world to come. So, which is uh, very, very important, as we said many times, uh, uh, our goal in this life is, uh, uh, is uh, to serve Hashem. Why? In order to, to, to get to the final destination. Final destination is the world to come. Uh, so, um, in some sense, uh, this um, this world is only like in intermediate step, right? So, of course, if if, if you're talking intermediate step and final destination, so final destination would be more important. So, commentary: a person's uh, person's Torah study and the mitzvah is motivated. Um, just one second. A person Torah study. And the mitzvah is motivate mitzvah 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 it motivate at the means through which uh, will attain the portion of the world to come. Exactly. Okay, that's that's what we said. The reason given by Rambam it has a source above Mitzia, Kriyas 28a, state a different reason. He, uh, he and his father are both um, obligated to honor his teacher. It's very interesting. So one one reason, as we explained, because uh, the teacher brings his to the world to come. But uh, another another explanation also very interesting, right? So this person, this son, right, and um, and his father obligated to honor the Torah scholar. So even even uh, the, this Torah scholar is only um, a teacher of my son, but since he is a Torah scholar, he, uh, I I obligated to. Um, to honor him separately, even if I don't learn from him. The Rambam quotes this rational as Sefer Hamitzvah's past the commandment to honor. Okay, continue. Accordingly, if he saw a lost object belonging to his father and one belongs to his teacher, the lost object belonging to his teacher takes precedence. So, uh, comment here. Therefore, he should tend to his teacher uh, article first. Only after returning it, he should attend to his father. 
So of course, uh, we're talking about the case where when he cannot uh, take care of uh, two lost objects at, at the same time. I mean, maybe because they're heavy or for, for some other reason. But otherwise, yeah, yeah he would, uh, would need to do it at the same time. Otherwise, uh, some, some other dishonest person would come and, and take it for, for himself. Okay, so continue. If his father and his teacher are both carrying loads, he should relieve his teacher, a teacher's load and then he, of his father. Number six commentary. In this commentary to Mishnah Kiriyas 6.9, Rambam equates a removing load with returning lost article and redeeming person from captivity in all res uh, respects. Very interesting. Uh, so let's say uh, in, in olden days, uh, right, what, what, what would people do? They will walk and carry loads, right, on their head or on their back, on their shoulder, right? Uh, so so the, this person sees the, his teacher and his father carrying some heavy loads, so he has to uh, relieve uh, his father first. And it's very interesting, so Rambam equates removing, uh, removing load with returning lost article. Okay, and uh, redeeming person from captivity. So in some sense, it's very interesting uh, uh, parallel. So a person is uh, um, who uh, who carries this uh, heavy load. In some 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 sense, he is like a captive, right? So he cannot go wherever he wants to. Accordingly, as explained below, if one's father is also a Torah scholar. One's father is, a, is also a Torah scholar. He should be uh, given priority. Right? That's, uh, that's a different case if he's also a Torah scholar. However, uh, the case of Mishnah explains that uh, where there is a danger, when there is a danger to life uh, or property, and, uh, uh, and only honor is involved, uh, the priority should be given to one's teacher, even if one's father taught a scholar of equivalent stature. So let's uh, read this case of Mishnah one more time and we're going to explain. However, case of Mishnah explained that where there is no danger to the life or the property, the, um, no danger to life and, um, and only honor involved, priority should be given to one's teacher. Even if one's um, father uh, uh, father is a Torah scholar, equivalent statue. So it's very interesting. So this case of Mishnah says, I mean, if it's danger to life, uh, for, for example, a father is an elderly person and this uh, low, heavy load is killing him, right? So that would be danger to life, I guess. Right? So then he would take care of, uh, would help his father because he's uh, also a Torah scholar. But otherwise, Take care of the teacher. Okay, continue. If his father and his teacher held captives, he should redeem his uh, teacher and afterwards redeem his father. Uh, so, and, uh, okay, then the, the, he said, well, we'll be discussing important of this mitzvah. Can continue. So, that's, uh, that's one of the big mitzvah to redeem the prisoners. Right, um, continue, and uh, it, it's it's very interesting. It's uh, such such important mitzvah that uh, it's one of the very few mitzvah that uh, they say you you're even allowed to say, sell the Torah scroll if you have Torah scroll and to, to redeem to, to to obtain the money to redeem these uh, prisoners. Continue. Uh, however, if the father is also Torah scholar, he should redeem first his father. Okay, commentary. The decision is disputed. This decision is disputed with regard to the return of the lost object. As explained below, nevertheless, one second. Um, one second of them. <laughs> nevertheless, with, with regard to re redemption of the captives, all agree that because of the life. Uh, life and death uh, nature of the question one father is given priority and um, uh, if he has achieved some level of scholarship so uh, it's uh, it's very interesting explanation so we, we said um, in in regards to load if, if there is no the 
danger to life or to, to property. Right, but that here in captivity, for sure, it's uh, every day, it's a uh, danger to life. So if uh, father, even uh, some, some somewhat knowledgeable person, to an unknowledgeable person, so he has to redeem his father first, according to this opinion. Uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's according to this opinion, but that's what Rambam also said, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. So continue. So and and we said even if he is not equivalent to, to his teacher, but it's some has some a somewhat Torah scholar. Continue. Similarly, if his father is a Torah scholar, his father is a Torah scholar. Even if he is not equivalent to his teacher, he should return his lost article, and then uh, that belongs to his teacher. Right. So if uh, he's also Torah Torah scholar, so. Even not, uh, even he's not equivalent to his teacher. Uh, he should return the, his lost article, and then belongs to his teacher. Commentary. The commentaries have noted apparent contradiction between this statement and Hilchas Aveda 12:2, which states, "Okay, so what does it state? So it states um, the following rules apply when one sees a lost uh, object belongs to the, to his teacher and one lost object belongs to his father if the father was equal to this in stature to his teacher his uh, his father his father lost article is given precedence if not the teacher is given a precedence okay this applies only to a person pri primary teacher from whom he learned majority of the wisdom so it's not so simple as, as this uh, book is going to explain. For example, if, if somebody brought you back or inspired you uh, in YouTube show, so you owe life to that person. So maybe you, you did not learn uh, a majority of the wisdom, right? But you, you owe your life. Continue. Uh, the text of a Baba Basa, uh, Baba Mitzi, in the same place, the source of this decision is uh, closer to the text at uh, Hilchot Aveda, maybe in second place. Indeed, on that basis, uh, Hagachot Maimanit and other maintain that our text contain printer, printing error. Very interesting. However, that contradiction is difficult to accept, since the commentary on to the Mishnah Kriya same place, Rambam gives the father, who is a Torah scholar, priority of the person's teacher without requiring the father to be greater in stature. Okay. The Lechem Mishnah, so let's, let's continue, uh, finish reading and then we're going to explain. The Lechem Mishnah explained that our text refers to the situation when it is possible to retrieve both objects. And, uh, and the only um, question of, of, whose, uh, of whose priority, right? M meaning he, he can save the save uh, father's lost article and uh, and um, and his teacher in a contrast hill has refers to the situation when it is possible to return only one of the lost objects so m meaning there he said even uh, if father is a little uh Talmud Chacham, so you you have to save uh, uh his object so the, the the way the situation i see like maybe it, it's been carried by by the river, and then he jumped uh, into the river, and he can uh, save only one. That's uh, that's the thing. I think that uh, would be the example. Um, or it's like on some some like uh, uh, well traveled road. So if I, I can carry only one box or whatever suitcase, but I cannot carry two, so maybe like this also. Okay. Alternatively, the touch bits and red bus. <clears throat> explains that uh, here we're referring to the father, to a father, who has also instructed his son, albeit not to the same degree as a teacher. Okay, so here, okay, so the, here, I mean, uh, Rambam does not make mistakes. Even though, of course, as we saw before, many rabbis agree, in some cases, it was a printer, a printer's error. So this printer's error, like, uh, how did it come, come about? Uh, they, they would do all, all this like a uh, text manually, like letter by letter, page by page. It's like a uh, uh, very tedious job. So, and sometimes it, like uh, from 
from uh, from the handwriting. So from handwriting, person could uh, could uh, could understand uh, like differently. In a country, so some where it was some kind of abbreviation or something, possible. In a country, as Hilka Saveda refers to the father who is not attracted his son at all. Okay, so here, I mean, uh, well, a last explanation. Maybe he um, one uh, one thing is to be a Torah scholar, like uh, on any level. On and another thing is actually uh, teach uh, your son Torah that, that you know. That's a big difference. Okay, so continue. There is no greater honor that is due to a teacher and no greater awe that is due to a teacher. Right? That's, how, uh, that's how we have to teach, uh, treat our rabbis. Our sages declared in Amos 4.15, uh, your fear of your teacher should be equivalent to your fear of, uh, of heaven. Right? So commentary. In, uh, in, in his commentary to this Mishnah, Russia notes in Pesachim 22b, equates the um, difference due to the Torah scholar to that of due to God. That's it. Right? Surely, uh, that applies to the sage under whom uh, uh, he was studied. So no more, no less. Right. So we have to respect and be in awe of our rabbis as we in awe of God. Okay. So meaning uh, when one person is arguing and I, and I notice and I like... Uh, I witnessed like just recently somebody like arguing against a big rabbi and I tried to quiet this person down and said, look, that's uh, whatever he said, that's what we're going to do. So, I mean, your, <laughs> your opinion is irrelevant, but he was arguing. Some some people have this good spot. is uh, all right, being brazen. Okay. Um... Continue. Uh, therefore, they said, come to St. Henry 110a, the Rambam quotes the entire passage that follows below in Sefer Hamitzvah's positive commandment 209 uh, in his description, commentary, honor, Torah scholar. Okay, so what do they say? Therefore, they say, whoever uh, disputes the authority of his teacher, so he said, maybe this rabbi does not know, like uh, we're talking about kosher rabbi, right? Maybe he does not know, maybe he forgot, maybe he's slow, maybe this, maybe that, maybe I owe, owe outgrew him. And th this person who, who, who argued against the great rabbi and I was witness, so, so he was like, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how long he's been in the learning Torah, maybe, maybe a year or so. Doesn't matter, even, even he, he's not brilliant, very brilliant, but... Uh, uh, he's some somewhat uh, smart, I would say. Yeah, let's yeah. So, but arguing against rabbi, so it like he finished whatever he finished, and it went into his head. The, so the he's all, almost as a big rabbi, which is uh, not uh, not right. Okay, so one more time. <clears throat> Therefore, um, they they said whoever dispute authority of, of his teacher, uh, fourteen. That is, comes out against his decision, teaching and granting decisions without permission. So, meaning what uh, is meaning um, comes out against his decision. Mean, meaning that so the, the case I'm referring to. So that, that person asked a rabbi a question, right? Uh, rabbi told him what to do. He said no, and then he gives argument why? Why not? Okay, rabbi listened to all of these arguments and. Uh, uh, and uh, and he said, okay, I consulted with other people, absolutely not. And this person said, oh, that, that's what it is, absolutely not. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it anyway. That's what he said. That's uh, stupidity at his best. Of course, it's arrogance. Um, so, and it's exactly this number 14 talks about that person, comes out against his decision teaching and granting decisions, right, uh, without his uh, permission. Sefer HaMitzvah, same place. Continue. Continue. So one, one more time, the whole sentence. Whoever disputes the authority of his teacher, maybe maybe he does not know, right, is uh, considering as if he revolts, revolts against divine presence, as implied by the Numbers 26.9, who led the revolt against God. 
So who that? Uh, this uh, described the Korah revolt, right? Korah, we know that the Pasha Korah when when he he was uh, he went against Moshe and Aaron. So he's like uh, on the surface he was against Aaron, but also against Moshe as well, and uh, the whole thing that Hashem commanded. Hashem said, uh, "Let the Aaron be in Kohen Gadol." Aaron did not want it, and I mean uh, it's a big responsibility. But uh, anyway, he said uh, he, he it says that um, that uh, Korach and he they his followers went again, went again against God. <clears throat> this revolt described Korach's revolt, though uh, ostensibly the revolt was uh, dis, uh, directed against Moshe. The Torah considered is directed against God Himself, no more, no less. I mean, uh, Mo Moshe said, who, "Like, who am I? I'm just, uh, just repeating what Hashem said. Like, uh, Hashem said like this. So why, why are you, gay, why are you go going against Hashem? Right? And Moshe said, like, uh, people who are arguing with uh, Moshe said, why are you going against Hashem? Okay. So continue. Uh, whoever engages in controversy with his teacher is considered as if he engaged in controversy with divine presence, as implied by Numbers uh, 20 13, where the Jews contested with God uh, and, were, um, and where he was uh, sanctified. Okay, and where he was sanctified. What does it mean? In uh, Numbers uh, 20 verses 1 through 3 describes how, because of the lack of water, the Jews become uh, quarreling. We began quarreling with Moshe. As above, uh, God in, interpreted this con contra uh, controversy as being directed against God Himself, not not against Moshe. I mean, uh, it, uh, Moshe did not have any power to give them water, take away the water from from them. Right? It was only Hashem's power. So they went against Hashem, but uh, against Moshe in their mind. In their speech, but Hashem said, "No, they went against me." Whoever complains against his teacher is considered if he's complained, uh, uh, if he complains against the divine presence, as implied by uh, that's crazy, right? By Exodus uh, sixteen eight eight, your complaints are not against us, but against God. Seventeen. Um. Then the Jew complains against him. Uh, when the Jew, when Jews complains against him and Aaron, so him meaning Moshe, I guess, uh, because of the lack of food, Moshe gave them this reply. Uh, on these words, the Mehilta comments: Whoever speaks against the shepherds of the Jewish people is considered if he's uh, if he spoke against God, especially. I mean, about the greatest people of our generation, greatest rabbi, like uh, uh, just, just um, during the coronavirus, when Rav Kanievsky, Zetzer, Zeher, Tzadik, Radracha, so he said, uh, I, th I think he said, uh, he asked him a question about uh, uh, flu shot, uh, uh, the shots, he said, yeah, there is no problem, it's in, it's not it's not forbidden so some people so they were openly in uh, from a religious community or, of course they're not religious they but when they look religious right uh, against him and threaten his life it's like crazy people right very negative things about him so i i, I think my, my uh, if if you go and check what happened to these people i don't i don't think they're alive or they they're not healthy or something very bad happened to them Unfortunately, right? Because well, when you go against such a person, nothing is good is going, is going to happen to you. And uh, how many people went against Rabbi Wadi as a also? That's uh, <clears throat> okay. That's uh, as we call it, Ruach Shtus. So, Ruach Shtus is, um, is a spirit of like uh, craziness. Sometimes, uh, goes into person's mind and even though he knows uh, this halacha and I mean uh, I hope that he knows it because as, as we see it's actually quoted from different places and at least in three places it says that so you go against your rabbi you go against a great rabbi so you go going against Hashem okay and it's a Rashi on, on, on the verse um, 
Donc là, ça va être continue. What were things that disparently of his teacher? So uh, I can things right of his teacher is considered as he thought the disparately of divine uh, of divine presence as implied. Um, so let the, before we see the what, what the verse says. Uh, whoever did, uh, thinks uh, disparently of his teacher coming to him, explained the statement and actions in an unfavorable light that he does not know. Maybe he's only smart than this, but uh, maybe he only the, uh, knows the weekly portion, but not halacha, halacha, but not uh, ashkafa, this and that. So, okay. So they, they take cre um, credence from, from a teacher, right? They uh, think even like he thinks in his mind is considered as though he is thinks disparately of divine presence as we, uh, and we say that Hashem uh, it's one of the 13 principles of Judaism that Hashem knows all of our thoughts right so on, on one hand it, it's only thoughts that are hidden but on the other hand no it's not hidden it's all in open for Hashem and the people spoke against uh, as it says in Numbers 21 and 5 and the people spoke out against God and Moshe Number 19. In this case as well, the people directed uh, their uh, criticism over lack of food and water to Moshe. However, the Torah considered it as being directed against God. Okay. So, no more, no less. Okay, so we finished this halacha. It was very long, but very interesting. Many things we learned. Any questions on what we said? Okay. No problem, no questions. Okay, so we continue this uh, second halacha, <clears throat> and it says, uh, "What is um, what is meant by disputing the authority of one's teacher?" Here we go. Right, <laughs> a person who establishes a house of study where he sits, explain, uh, explains, and teaches without his teacher's permission in his teacher's lifetime. This applies even when one's teacher is uh, is in another country. It is forbidden to, to ever render a halakhic judgment in one's teacher's presence. Whoever renders a halakhic judgment in his teacher's presence is liable for death at the hand of heaven. So let's try to understand uh, what it's all means. It's very interesting <coughs> Okay. So from the beginning, and we're going to explain. What is meant by disputing the authority of one's teacher? So commentary. As mentioned in, um, so bef before we continue, I have to explain. So in, in olden days, right, in olden days, in times of Gemara and Mishnah, uh, there were no, like, no, um, almost no books, only only written Torah, right? Only 24 24 books, right? Uh, five books of Moshe, others, uh, uh, prophets and writings. That's it. But all of these uh, halachas were uh, were taught earlier, orally, orally, right? So, so meaning that uh, majority of the information a person would uh, would learn from from his teacher in class, and uh, many people knew knew, knew Humash and other uh, books just by heart. They, they would quote uh, like <clears throat> exactly like verses, right? Um, so that's why when he has his his primary teacher, meaning that he's uh, like uh, it's it's time before Shulchan Aruch. We have to understand. So it's time uh, before Rambam, right? So so it was not so simple to to, to know the halacha, even though you have a gemara. Let's say. Even after they, they published Gemara, so you, you read the Gemara. The, these stages that this, this stage, stage that that. Okay, very nice, very interesting. Uh, I think I, I understand what what said, who said what. But at the end of the argument, do I know what to do? Absolutely not. I have no idea. <clears throat> and uh, so so was uh, with many many people. They did not know what to do. They did not know halacha, right? So that's why they needed rabbi to explain uh, all of the details. So today we have Sholchan Oro, and um, and uh, it's uh, much easier. But even in Sholchan Oro, it's not so simple, right? And uh, you, you read commentary on Sholchan Oro, you read the Mishnah Brura. Okay, if if you have a background 
and, and you know halacha, and you went uh, over it uh, one time, okay, and you go with the Mishnah Barash, well, yeah, you, you can get some ideas. But if you knew and in totally new topics, so most likely you would not understand. Okay, or, or misunderstand, mis misinterpret. Okay. <clears throat> so that's uh, that was the why it was, uh, was so important to to uh, to have this teacher who, who would be personal primary source of knowledge, and uh, so that uh, that student was uh, like from from this uh, Rabbi Sishiva. So and 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 he was known that he was Talmud, the student of so that that Rabbi, and uh, let's say Rabbi went away and he opened. Uh, uh, yeshiva or like uh, whatever the the, what is it, the based in uh, <clears throat> and uh, and a, a, everybody knows him as his uh, a student of that rabbi so it's like he's in some sense like a, a representative of this rabbi that's uh, that's the problem of course if rabbi did not authorize okay that's just a little uh, a background okay <clears throat> so let, let's start from the beginning and the basic commentaries what is meant by disputing the authority of one's teacher, commentary? As mentioned in the, in the commentary to the previous halacha, halacha non states, uh, when does the above apply? To the outstanding teacher, right? to uh, outstanding teacher, meaning the, the primary teacher, from whom one gained the majority of one's wisdom. However, a person who has not gained the majority of his wisdom under the teacher's instruction, is considered to be both a student and a colleague. One is not obligated to honor him in all of the above matters. So if he's a, a student and a colleague, yeah. So continue, M meaning that uh, it's one of the teachers that uh, that he learned. For, for example, pe people learn uh, uh, Hashkafa, Jewish uh, Ideology from one person and uh, halacha from another person. There is no like, uh, there is no contradiction. Two different, uh, one expert in one field, another expert in another field. Okay. So continue, and uh, in Torah portion he could learn from both of them or from third person. But uh, try to stick to only two, otherwise people get confused. A person who establishes a house of study uh, where he sits, right? explains and teaches without one teacher's permission so because as we explained um everybody knows him uh, un under this uh, uh, that he's a student that teacher in his teacher's lifetime okay so what does it mean um a person so one more time the sentence a lot of commentaries a person who established house of study where he sits and explains so basically he opened up his yeshiva right, and teaches commentary he renders halachic decisions, not, not only teaches, but uh, um, renders halachic decisions. So again, it was uh, the, the time before the Shulchan Aruch. So today we said we have Shulchan Aruch and uh, all of these books, they came after it. So it's easy, it's, it's easy to, uh, to come up with a uh, decision, much easier. Of course, if it's a difficult case, you have to go to Talmud Chacham, but uh, in many cases, it's uh, like people asking questions, not because it's a difficult uh, case, but because they're ignorant, which is, uh, which is two different things. Okay. So one more time, here in this halakhic decision, Shulchan Orach, Yorak Deya 242.7, see also Kev Yisrael Mishnah explained, the prohibition applies only to rendering halakhic decisions on a matter directly related to practice. Very interesting. Uh, there is no difficulty involved in teaching on a merely theoretical level. <clears throat> uh, whoever uh, is um, so meaning uh, practice, meaning what what this person should do, like sp in, in this specific situation, right? What what he should do? That's uh, that's practical advice, right? Uh, but uh, some things in theory, maybe this, maybe that. That's uh, that's a different story. There is no difficulty involved in teaching on a merely theoretical level, as we said. Uh, however, uh, it is not clear whether Rambam would accept this view. Mm -hmm. I mean, if uh, maybe if uh, if this uh, person uh, teaches Talmud, it would not. It's like it's not practical halacha. 
like if, even even that person I remember all of the arguments and all of the details who said what and who contradict uh, whom uh, with what but still it's not final halakh it does not mean he, that he knows what to do so it's more on a theoretical level I, I think the Rishon Litzion explains that this prohibition applies even to establishing a house of study under one's own direction mm -hmm. even though one does not render a halakhic decision so he he decided to go his way but since everybody know that this i'm just saying right as a student of that great rabbi so he can mislead people right? <clears throat> so and all is done without teacher's permission so if he <laughs> if teacher permitted he bless him there is no problem so now he's trying to like he trying to branch out and uh, do his own thing commentary a person granted permission to his teacher by by his teacher is allowed to render halakhic decisions outside of the teacher's presence there, there is no problem so our rabbi is very busy right so he said uh, some easy questions you uh, you can answer right you can uh, you can have a class whatever you can teach others but difficult question you you can send to me i mean uh, he does not have simply enough time to teach everything that's uh, that's normal right so he assigned that person uh, to teach uh, some subject there is no problem the ramayana in the york day 242 14 equates teacher granting permission to a student to render halakhic decision to the concept of smicha within the uh, its present context in a contrast to definition talmudic times so smicha meaning that um, what is smicha it's uh, when, when somebody puts uh, the hands on somebody else's head it's like uh, and uh, sun, sun, sanctify this person and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, the, this comes of smicha so he said now you are being uh, given the power also to to render halakhic decision that's it okay but uh, smicha today does not exist why it's very simple um uh, one second what, what, is it? what was the explanation about smicha uh, just one second mm. something with the temple hmm. it's escaping sorry okay um so in his teacher's lifetime right so so uh, so he teaches he sits he opens up yeshiva in his teacher teacher's lifetime commentary it is a mark of disrespect to one's teacher to set the oneself up to be equivalent to his authority so i have to decide you you are you are you are talmud or you are colleague so if you tell me it and you get uh, permission from a teacher no problem but if you decide that you're a colleague so it's uh it's very very arrogant right Erwin 62b relates as as long as Rav Huna was alive Rav Hizda the greatest of the great right? uh, his disciple would not render any decisions even those concerning the obvious matters as um dipping an egg in a mixture of soy milk and bread so oh, sour milk I'm sorry sour uh, uh, milk and bread okay so after the teacher's death there was no re restriction provided one fits to render a Torah judgment okay so out of the respect to his teacher so he would I guess send everybody to his teacher and uh, only after his death uh, he was able to, to to tell people what to do continue this applies even when one's teacher is in another country so a person might think of, look he's in another country so today is uh all of the countries different countries they uh, with the transportation with the uh, like uh, fast transportation it's not so far any longer but in olden days it's uh you it, it takes you six months uh, four months uh, just to get to another country by sea that's a uh, very big distance right no even then it's very so he's very very far away so still not allowed this can be derived from erovin 63a he said that Rav Hamnuna would not uh, render judgment in Rav Huza's lifetime, even though they lived in different cities. Very interesting. Continue. Oh, 
Okay, so I I remember about about the smicha. So the the smicha uh, must be passed from uh, from Moshe Rabbeinu directly, unbroken chain, um, from teacher to student, teacher to student, and uh, today we, we don't have such a, a knowledge any longer. That's the thing. Okay, and plus I think it must be done by by some headroom. So his teacher must be must have smicha from some headroom. Of course, we don't have some headroom today. That's that's I think a second second condition. But but first condition is uh, yeah, it, it must be unbroken chain from Moshe Rabbeinu. Continue. It is forbidden uh, to ever render halachic judgment in one's teacher's presence. So here. Uh, Rabbi is here in front of you. Somebody, I come, you, you, stu you, 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 your own student, your friend, you, I don't know. Somebody, I come to ask you the decision. So you, 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 you direct uh, this person to Rabbi. Let him, uh, let, uh, let him answer. And uh, you, you listen the, to the answer and uh, check. Maybe, maybe whatever, maybe whatever you were able, uh, you were ready to answer. It's not, uh, it was not the right answer. Right? Let him answer. Commentary. Even though a person has been granted permission by his teacher to render the decision, uh, halakhic judgment, sorry, in general, the only exception are the instances mentioned in the following halakha. The Vilna Gaon explains that this, uh, this includes even teaching halakhic concept uh, incidentally, outside the context of the house of study. Okay, and so then, so I, I guess maybe they, they sit around the table and somebody came, uh, um, let's say, even his son came, uh, he, his own son came, and his, his rabbi also at the, the table, so he said, okay, rabbi, so what, what, what would be the case, what would be the answer in such a, such a case, right, my, my son is asked. So it would be very respectful to rabbi. Okay. Mm, okay, so continue. It is forbidden to ever render halakhic judgment, so we just said, in, uh, in one's teacher presence, teacher's presence commentary. Rambam defines this term in the next halakha. Right? So what does his hint's presence mean? Ksuba 60b relates that without considering the question of respect due to one's teacher, there is an additional problem. A spiritual influences will cause the student who renders halakhic judgment uh, in his teacher's presence to err. Hmm. One more time, so Ksuba uh, 60b relates that without considering the question of respect due to one teacher, so meaning a uh, person did not think maybe whatever, if I'm going to jump, uh, jump in and answer the, the question, maybe it's going to be a disrespect to the teacher, right? So there is additional problem. Spiritual influence influences will cause students to render halakhic judgment in his teacher's presence as heir. So meaning what the way I understand that Hashem is going to pre, um, preserve the, uh, the the respect, the stature of of, of his teacher. So the, this person, even though like if. If you ask him tomorrow or yesterday or another time when the teacher is not there, he will give you the right answer. But in in uh, uh, in the presence of the teacher, so he's he's going to get confused. That's a scary thing. Okay, the Maharik states that um, if the student has reached the statue approximate to that of his teacher, he is permitted to render halakhic judgment even in his pre uh, teacher's presence. But anyway, so our great rabbis, even in the presence of their teacher, they would ha follow this halacha very, very closely, right? Unless the teacher, the teacher is insist and said, no, I'm your teacher. That's why I'm telling you what to do, right? So, okay, so you must listen to me. So in this case, yeah, he would, uh, he would uh, go and uh, teach and answer the questions. He points, uh, he, he points out many Talmudic passages which record a halakhic decision given by Reish Lakish in the presence of Rabbi Yohanan, his teacher. So, so the, the story of 
Reish Lakish the gangs, gangster, and he saw uh, Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan said, "Yeah, come to come to learn uh, Torah," and he came and uh, he was uh, learning. He became Chavrus of uh, Rabbi Yochanan. So of course, Rabbi Yochanan was was a scholar before the Reish Lakish, and he was a scholar during and after the Reish Lakish. It's very interesting. But on some the in some sense, they were uh, like almost like a colleagues. So they were able to argue against each other. Okay, Sifri uh, Cohen, Yorak Dea, explained that it is possible to say that Rambam would accept this decision. Okay, so meaning uh, they, in some sense, on uh, like uh, like uh, students and a, uh, like students and a colleague. Uh, however, there is no minimum, uh, in, no, there is no information on such concept. In Rambam's words. Okay, I see. Continue. Whoever in the scholastic decision in his teacher's presence is liable for death and the hands of heaven. So the the, uh, the famous example would be the sons of Aaron, right? When when they decided to to, to bring this foreign fire uh, inside inside of uh, Holy of Holies, right? Even when they were drunk and so that's uh, instead of us go and ask Moshe, ask Aaron if they are allowed to do this, they, they, they decide, no, no, we know better. Right? And they died, as we know. 27. Uh, exactly. So, yeah, that, that's, that's the case. In room 63a explains that Nadav and Navihu, our own sons, died. Okay. Says in Vayikra chapter ten. Okay, because of this scene, um, rendering judgment outside the teacher's presence without his permission, and rendering a judgment in his presence with his permission, all the forbid, uh, all the forbidden, and not deserve such a punishment. Right. So. So it's very interesting. It's different in, in his presence and uh, in not, not in his presence. Uh, it must be emphasized that today, when the most uh, Torah knowledge is gained uh, from study of the text and not from the personal instruction, many authorities maintain that this concept does not apply. Meaning, uh, so what he said, since uh, according to, to, to some rabbis, that because we learn from uh, uh, from the books, if if people do learn from the books, many many people, uh, I'm trying to force some people to start uh, reading the books, but like, they they prefer only to, to watch lectures to be like a, uh, like a passive uh, learner. That's that's the problem, right? See how the hot my manit like a mishnah halacha five. However, this option is not accepted by all authorities. Okay, this uh, the, the, this opinion. I'm sorry, this opinion is not accepted by all authorities. Of course, I mean just just because they got it from the books, but then the Rabbi explained what it says in the books and became clear. Okay, so any questions on what we said? Finish that halacha. So let's see how long is the next one. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so let's uh, let's try to do the next one then. If no questions, we can do the next one. So number three, a person, if a person asks a student regarding a halakhic question, and there are twelve mil between him and his teacher, he is permitted to answer. Furthermore, um, to prevent the transgression, it is permitted to give a halakhic judgment, uh, even in the presence of one's teacher. Okay. Uh, what does the above, what does the above imply? For example, when uh, one mm, when one sees a person performing forbidden act because he was unaware uh, of the prohibition, or because uh, of his uh, perversity, he should try to prevent him by, by telling him this is forbidden. This applies even uh, in his teacher's presence. And even though the teacher had not given him permission, 
whenever the, the um, desecration of the God's name is involved, no de uh, deference is paid to the teacher's honor. So Rabbi Ruben Shlita always uh, uses this uh, this line. Right? When, when they ask him uh, <laughs> why why he's going to be about the, against this clown, about that clown, so why uh, other other people are quiet, big rabbi is quiet, uh, and he's uh, he's the one who fights in the war. So that's exactly the answer is uh, this uh, um, this verse, right? When when uh, what what Rambam says when the God's um, when the secretion of God's name is involved. No, so we don't we don't have respect to rabbi. Maybe big rabbi say you're going to say something. Of course, you you consult and you make sure that whatever you do is proper, right? In uh, according to halacha, right? And then uh, and then uh, you you fight the wars of Hashem to uh, to prevent the desecration of His holy name. When does the buff apply with regard to the matters that came up incidentally? Uh, however, establishing one uh, oneself in as a halachic catharsis and see, uh, to sit and uh, re reply to all who ask concerning halachic matters is forbidden. It's very interesting. So I mean, if if somebody, so if like sim simple uh, idea of this would be uh, like it's it's before Shabbos and and somebody like a, a lady came, your neighbor came and she asked you a question about uh, about whatever. Laws of Shabbos. So you're not going to tell him, no, no, go, go to this rabbi. I am, I'm such a humble person. I cannot answer. No, no. Well, what do you mean? It's, uh, it's, it's very important uh, for, for her to know right now. So if you know the answer, so don't, uh, don't, uh, don't defer to somebody else. So say, give, give you an answer. So of course, uh, like uh, as, as Rambam explained, we have to apply this uh, um, halacha with, uh, with a sense also. Okay. So, um, okay, so let's uh, let's at least finish reading because it's very long. I see there are a lot of commentary, commentary so we're going to leave it to, to the next time. So it says, uh, when does the buff apply with regard to the matter that came uh, incidentally? Have we established oneself halakhic authority to sit uh, and reply to, uh, to all who ask concerning halakhic matters is forbidden? Even if the student is at uh, one end of the world and teacher is at the other, until either a teacher dies or student receives permission from his teacher. Um, not everyone uh, whose teacher teacher dies is permitted to sit and render judgment concerning Torah law. Only one who is uh, who is a student worthy of rendering the judgment. So that's why it's not our personal decision whether to. Um, uh, like uh, whether to render judgment or not, so it has to be evaluated by by uh, by your teacher. I do do you feel to do that or not? So I have uh, some people, and they would uh, come like uh, come to my house and ask me like uh, I did. Uh, I somebody asked me this question. I said this and this. Is it correct? I like I said you normal. Why you ask me now? Like you have to ask before. Uh, but if you answer that person like. Uh, if, why, why, why would you answer? Why would it uh, render halachic decision if you're not sure yourself? You know, so people take it very, very lightly, and it's absolutely wrong. So if, if somebody asks you the halachic decision, so yeah, have to know for sure or don't answer. Send uh, this person somewhere else or take your time. Uh, if, if you're not sure, go to the books, check the books, and then only then uh, give an answer. Right, the, but don't give answer and then ask somebody like three weeks later. Uh, actually, by by the way, do you think I did I did right or not? That's uh, that's not right. Okay, we stop here. Any questions on what we said or any topic? Go ahead. Okay, so if not, yeah, no problem. We stop here and tomorrow we continue with us uh, with our class halachas uh, uh, Okay. No questions, good night. Thank you.